With us to discuss the Democratic congressional delegation and U.S.-Israel military ties is Ambassador Yoram Ettingil. Yoram, thank you for joining. Thank you. So we're seeing a Democratic congressional delegation led by the minority leader with a strong pro-Israel message. Is this a sign of bipartisan support? Well, it's a sign of the systematic support of Israel by the legislature, while all presidents, but for one, uh, Trump, uh, pressured uh, Israel. And this is a reminder to the Israeli government that in Washington, there are two uh, joint uh, drivers, uh, namely the executive and the legislature, both have equal power, they uh, are co-equal, uh, co-determining, and Congress has played traditionally since 1948 a major role in expanding the strategic ties between the two countries, even when presidents were very reluctant, it was Congress that forced upon the White House number of very crucial items of uh, cooperation, mostly in the area of defense. Some are also in the commercial area. Mm -hmm. Hakeem Jeffries said that U.S. military support would be unaffected by differences over the judicial reform. That must have been good for Prime Minister Netanyahu to hear. Well, it's, it's the reality. It suits American interests. Uh, we should wake up and, in a way, get rid of the uh, misnomer of foreign aid. Israel does not get foreign aid from the United States. The U.S. invests in Israel and gets a return on investment, which is an annual few hundred percent in dollar terms, namely much, much greater than uh, the scope of the $3.8 billion of foreign aid. And just to give uh, one of many uh, such examples, Israel is uh, employing American combat aircraft, the F-15, F-16, and F-35, for which Israel obviously is very, very grateful. But we return, we return something which the U.S. does not get from anyone else, and that's the Israeli experience which we share with the U.S. every single day, every single day, the Israeli Air Force shares with the manufacturers of the combat aircraft and with the Air Force operational maintenance and repair lessons. There are hundreds, literally hundreds, of such lessons integrated into upgrades in the updated generation of the combat aircraft. And that spares the U.S. many, many years of research and development, which amounts to billions of dollars. It enhances the U.S. competitiveness in the global market, which means more and more export of the F-35, F-16, and F-15, which amounts to additional billions of dollars. And it expands the employment base of the defense and aerospace uh, industry. And that's only one of many such uh, examples, which basically means it's a mutually beneficial two-way street. And the minority leader, rightfully so, says that there's no connection between the current controversy in Israel and the future of that annual investment in Israel he is absolutely correct from the U.S. interest point of view. It serves both the U.S. and Israel. Do you anticipate any changes to the military alliance between Israel and the U.S. moving forward? Well, I don't anticipate an American initiative. Uh, quite frankly, I have been for many, many, many years a fan of a phase-out uh, phase out of uh, what is uh, wrongly uh, called foreign aid over some 10 years, and every year dedicate the 10% phase out to a new binational 
industrial foundation or fund which will get together American and Israeli companies with very, very uh, real, clear synergy between the two of them. That will do justice to both countries and phasing out the uh, for so what is called foreign aid would be a boom, would be a boom to the Israeli defense industry, which today is deprived of a very substantial market, namely the Israeli military. Israel must, Israel must get its military assistance from the U.S. due to the links attached to uh, foreign aid. And once we phase it out, it will be a major tailwind to the Israeli defense industry. It will enhance dramatically our favorability or our diplomatic standing in the U.S. It will also enhance our posture of deterrence being independent of foreign aid. And mind you, today, the Israeli gross domestic product is over $500 billion. We're talking about significantly less than 1% of GDP. To phase it out over 10 years, especially against the backdrop of what we did during uh, COVID or Corona time, and does not amount to an insurmountable uh, challenge. Phasing out foreign aid uh, to Israel would do justice to the bilateral relations, would do justice to the Israeli economy, mostly the defense industry, and would do justice to Israel's standing in the American public. Okay. Yoram Ettingel, thank you for your important input. Thank you.